couple comments. First of all, I, uh, I don't think we, we play particularly well, but I'll never let that get in the way because it, it kind of bothers me when uh, you know they take away from the effort the other team. And uh, I thought the other team played really, really hard, especially on defense, and, and they did a nice job uh, of scheming up against us. But on champions, uh, on defense, they played very well. Uh, our secondary is playing a very, very high level. Eli Apple, great at champion. Gary Ann Conley, uh, both those corners are playing great. Tyvis Powell, uh, great at a champion. Ray Kwan, Josh Perry, and Tyquan Lewis, all graded out. And then the defensive co-players of the game were Von Bell played about as good as you can. He's playing at a very, very high level. And Darren Lee, uh, so players of the game were Von Bell and Darren Lee. On uh, the other side, not many. Not many. Didn't play as well on offense. And you had uh, offensive champions were Curtis Samuel. And then the player of the game played outstanding, especially, uh, you know, ran hard. But then also was, uh, he's the best back in the country without the ball in his hand. Uh, pretty damn good with it in his hand, too. But it's uh, Ezekiel Elliott, uh, graded out of champion. Special teams, player of the game, co. And this is outstanding to see, is Terry McLaurin. He downed a punt at the two-yard line with an incredible effort. Uh, had a tackle on punt, a great tackle, and then punt block was tremendous effort as well. So it's good to see a young guy like him that does everything right. Gary on Conley was the other co-special teams player of the week, and uh, he's involved in three phases, and that's in addition, obviously, playing every snap on defense. Uh, special teams, is, you know, I don't have the stats in front of me, but as far as field position and coverage units, we're, we're on our game still. Uh, I don't know if we try to field goal or not. Uh, we're still not settled. Jack is, uh, we had two penalties on kickoff, and that's, uh, that's got to be addressed and got to get fixed. So, and we are. So, with that, I'll answer your questions for you. Front row right, Austin. Urban, you just mentioned Gary a couple times. What do you think about where he was a year ago to now? How far has he come? Where is he ranked among those most improved players you've talked about? Number one, he's a guy that uh, a year ago, we all saw it coming. He was just a little undersized when we first got here. And he's a guy that, you know, it's interesting, and I made a point to our team probably about a thousand times, but every guy that I called up that's playing well does things right on and off the field academically. And, and Gary Ann Conley is just a, hey, Gary Ann, how's it going? It's going great, coach. And uh, that's a credit to the people who raised him. And uh, it's just, and, and Terry McLaurin and a guy, another guy that's coming on like wildfire is Paris Campbell. He's just another guy who just does right. And uh, I'd like to think that when people say Ohio State, it's not just recruit good players, but we develop them. And, and those kids are, Gary on's playing great. When did you guys start seeing him turn the corner? Special teams a year ago. He became uh, the Devin Smith as far as the gunner. If you remember some of the great efforts he had on kickoff and punt. And uh, yeah, he's, he's outstanding. He's, he's one of our fastest players, too. Nice long corner, six foot tall or six one, whatever he is. Front row middle, Dave. Coach, only three true freshmen have played so far. I know you guys have had two close games, obviously, but how many do you anticipate will play? I know you have 25 true freshmen. How, how many do you think will yeah, play? At this point, I always get upset about, not upset, I just you wish you could get them in there faster. You know, uh, Nick Connor so close, and Baker. Uh, you know, Justin Hilliard had a good week. Offense line, Isaiah got in. I'd say the next, the next one. Uh, Mike Weber should be coming back this week. He, he'll, he'll be a guy that will probably play. Uh, wide receiver KJ's, you know, we just we got some depth at receiver. He certainly has earned the right to mix in there a little bit, but we're not sure we're going to do that yet. He had a little injury too, but he's fine now. Um, yeah, just you, you wish you'd play more, but you know, it's right now we got a little bit of depth. Kyle Berger, he's a redshirt freshman. Kyle what, Berger. What's his status? Is, he, is there a chance he he might not play again? Or uh, I don't know. You know, he he retweaked his knee. I'm going to know more now, but I I don't still know. Yeah, he has he has been practicing. Second row left, Ari. Uh, Urban, when you uh, go to a, a camp like Sound Mind, Sound Body in Detroit, there's 1,000, 1,200 kids there, and there might be like 15 or 20 you guys are looking at specifically. Uh, can you go back to your time at, at Bowling Green, and uh, what were the challenges when you were a head coach of the MAC team where there might be three or 400 prospects on a thing like that, and how hard is it for a MAC team to differentiate themselves from the other MAC teams in terms of talent on their roster when you guys are all the same types of kids? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. That's... Um... You know, it's almost like you let the big boys go through and, and snag who they're going to snag and just keep hanging in there. And, and uh, that's where it's completely different when you go from uh, Bowling Green to Utah to, uh, uh, you know, a, a top five place. And uh, 
Uh, each, each one, I, you know, I, I've actually enjoyed Bowling Green recruiting as much as anything because you find those kids that you project a lot of times. You know, it's very typical for and this team we're playing. Is out, you know, I haven't researched their. I imagine they probably redshirt most of their linemen and let them develop and get, you know, because they're, they're a really big physical team. And that's what, kind of what we did at Bowling Green. You redshirt your linemen, you go, you know, you go places and try to find that. Maybe kids an inch too, inch too short, but he's got great speed. They have number 29 or corner is electric. I know their punt return, I'm not sure he's going to play, but he's electric and he maybe is an inch or two shorter, so people overlook guys like that, but they're, shoot, they're every bit as good as any punt returner we got. And um, so that's kind of the way you go about your business. The challenges that you face here at Ohio State are obvious, you know, going after the top kids against the top programs. But are there certain aspects to, you know, recruiting at a place in the MAC that might be even more difficult in terms of roster building than it is here at Ohio State? No, I think there's the, everything. There's advantages, you know. They're going to recruit against Toledo. I imagine, you know, Northern Illinois is a top, top uh, MAC school, and so I imagine Western Michigan. It was always, you know, historically, it was you know Western Michigan back when I was in there was Marshall, but you're going to recruit against those guys. But uh, it's just the identification process is so completely different. Like you said, you're looking at 250 names. Each coach has 50 names. Each coach here has four. You know, there's a huge difference. Second row left, Lori. Coach, we've discussed. Quite a bit. Your, the difficult decisions you face on game days regarding your quarterbacks. What about during the weeks? How hard has it been to divvy up the practice snaps in a way that meets your satisfaction? It's not hard. Not hard though. It's both of them get reps. Both of them will continue to get reps. The approach I've taken is uh, Cardell uh, started. He's a starting quarterback. I met with him yesterday, and uh, JT has not beat him out yet. Uh, he's going to continue to have opportunities to do that because JT's a very good player, and uh, Cardell's got to perform. We we. Neither played that well Saturday, but a lot of it was extenuating circumstances about protection, and uh, you know every time you know we just weren't we didn't play very well. So it's not it's not that difficult. There have been some wild swings in the way people perceive conferences already early in this season. Could you just evaluate where you think the Big Ten stands in relation? To I don't have any idea. I don't know where people have time to do all that. I don't know anyone else's schedule. I don't care. Uh, we got. I'm going to work on punt when I'm done here in a minute, and and we better. You know, we got enough issues. I don't. Yeah, I've been asked that question. Or did you hear what this guy said? I'm like, how do they say that? I don't know. Well, this time a year ago, we were a really bad team, and we got the better. So probably because our focus is on getting better and better and better, and that's going to be. I, I don't want to ever hear that through this. If I ever hear one of our coaches talk about another conference, or we, that's a, that's a problem, because I'm going to go check what they're doing during the day. Far left, Matt. Uh, just wonder how you react to a game like Saturday. Like in our world, we deal with fans who are wringing their hands over this was a great. This your was world, great. yeah. Immediate okay. <laughs> world, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. In your world, when you uh, when you look at the game, I mean, there were teams around the country that didn't play great, but won. There's teams that lost. How do you? What's your message, I guess, going forward? After we got to get better. We got to get much better in certain areas. We reward. We were. Reward the champions. Spend a lot of time on that. Make sure uh, well, we appreciate the great efforts, and then we got to get better. And uh, I will say this: it's it's good to be in a routine. We're back in our routine now, and, and uh, uh, but I, you know, I, and that's where I think I've grown. I don't care about any you know all these all this conversation about the country. I think I've finally learned, and I've maybe come with a little age and maturity. I, I don't care about. Uh, I'll do respect to everybody's opinions and. We have a job to do, and we take it real serious, and that's it, period. What about this? What about that? Done. Over. And that's my job to make sure that the most important group, these guys, the players, not you guys, the players, <laughs> are staying, uh, staying locked in. And if, if I'm not locked in or one of their position coaches are not locked in, that's not fair. So I, I don't, I'm sure everybody's got opinions. You went 38 zip, and what, what the heck happened? We didn't play very well, but you know, we, on defense we played outstanding. Kicking game was pretty good. You know, we had two penalties on kickoff. So what do you do? Well, we work at it. And uh, the biggest area of concern right now is the, you know, our we're, offense line gets a little, given a lot of credit around here. We are an offensive line driven, absolute offensive line driven program. Our success over the last three years and two games is because of our offensive line, and with that comes a lot of responsibility. We, we expect them to play much better. Is that? Putting it all on them, no. But when we play well, I put it all on them too. So we just got to play better. And the great thing is, I have an excellent line coach and uh, excellent players, and they're gonna. I imagine they're gonna have a great week. Stay over there to the left, Ralph. 
Urban, you've had a lot of success um, with players like <coughs> Braxton before. Maybe not as good as Braxton, but some of them. Um, where does your philosophy come from, from sort of this positionless or, or you know, he, he's a guy who does a lot of different things of using players in ways that maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago weren't really traditional ways of using a wide receiver or running back and sort of melding that. Where did that come from? Well, that, I, I think I told the story. It happened to uh, change my philosophy on offense and and uh, the approach to the game. And when we lost in Nebraska, when I was at Notre Dame in overtime. And uh, they were number one, and we were in the top 10 and lost that game. And I walked in, and David Gibbons was our best player on offense. He was a wide receiver. And I walked in, and he's an emotional guy, great kid, great football player. Went on to play in the NFL for a while, and uh, he was really emotional. I said, it's going to be OK, man. We'll, we'll, we'll bounce back. And he said, you don't understand, coach. I didn't touch the ball. And he wasn't saying it like some kids, well, I need the damn ball, not like that. It was uh, just he didn't feel he helped the team win. And I remember walking in the locker room and was very upset with myself that we did not get him the ball. And it's hard to get receivers the ball. If they roll up on you at W, you can't get them the ball. It's not real hard. If you want to give them, really give them the ball, put them behind center five yards and snap it to them. And that's kind of where the, you know, if you look over the years, we've done that with Jalen. We've done it with Percy Harvin, done it with Braxton Miller, done it with Dontre Wilson, done it with these really good athletes that need the ball in their hand. Now you got it. Now the, the next part of that is how do you create space for them? And that's a little more complicated when people know you're not going to throw. The good thing is Braxton can throw and will throw. So that gives you a little bit more. How, how soon? I imagine even when Braxton was playing quarterback, you knew he could do this role, probably, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was our offense that 2012. Snap it. Snap it down and go right, and then we're going to change it up and go left a couple of times. And Couple, Urban, number one, Malik Zaire is a quarterback at Notre Dame, went down with a broken ankle, is out yeah. for the year. You watched JT do that last year. Uh, does that ever give you pause about running your sure. quarterbacks? Yeah, we didn't run them yesterday, I don't think, at all, mm -hmm. or Saturday. Absolutely it does. And you just keep track of how many. You know, a lot of times the injuries we've had at quarterback are from the pocket. You know, JT's what was it last year, and, and uh, Braxton's was the year, you know the one he hurt his shoulder. So the pocket's the most dangerous area in my mind. To, but you know, obviously, that's not going to change. Yeah. But we do. We actually move the pocket quite a bit, too, nowadays, more than ever. Because you, expo you expose them expose in the pocket more so than when you break the pocket. So those are all a lot of thoughts we have. The other thing, guys y'all are playing Saturday. They've won 11 or more games the last five years. They won the MAC last saw, year. I just saw that. I know. but. How are you presenting this to your team? It's also they're also from the same division, not just the league, the same division as Toledo, which went down and upset Arkansas on Saturday. Uh, the good thing about the they're all coming, they're off today, but they come in and they get their iPads loaded up, and uh, their video is very good. They're they're a very good team offensively. The quarterback setting all kinds of records. Uh, they're 305 pounds on the defensive tackles, and and you know I'll watch, and it depends what kind of team we have. If we have an immature team, then I'd have to go berserk and, and have to make sure, not go berserk, but just have to really make a huge deal out of it. The, when you have a team that's really good on video, it's all about preparation and our players will respect them. I don't, that, that will, I do not anticipate a problem there. Front row left. Because they're good. I mean, that's the thing. They're, they're, very, they're 11 win teams. They've, they've beaten Northwestern, Purdue, Minnesota. Iowa, and Minnesota. And, that's, and they beat them. You know, I, I wouldn't call those upsets. I think these guys are very good. Urban, you've talked about how well the defense played against Hawaii. Is there ever like a little, I don't know if competition is the right word, but between your offense and your defense on your team to sort of, I don't know, be the standout unit or if the offense is playing really well, then the defense wants to be great too? I hope there is. I hope there is a competition among the units. I hope there's competition. And, you know, I, uh, I made a big deal of that in the meeting yesterday. There's been times around here where the offense kind of hung in there and, you know, Kind of held it together, but that's part of being a good team. I don't. There's no, and then you have to watch that there's any finger pointing. I can assure you, there's none of that. And if there is, that's when you have to kill it. But just healthy competition about we have to play better and defense. It's more appreciation for what they do. We come in here and I'll have Coach Fickle will show five to six plays of extraordinary effort on defense because a lot of times our players don't get to see that. And then I'll have Sam Coach Warner will come up and show those five to six plays so that, and then we show a bunch of kicking team plays and it's it's. One, number one, to reward the efforts. Number two, because a lot of times they don't see that. 
And I think appreciation for how hard the other side or the other phase goes is critical. And I don't know how specific you can get, but just whatever with the offensive execution that you weren't as happy with, whether on the line or someone else, was it missed assignments? Is it bad technique? Is it just Every time we got to the second level, and usually we're a very good perimeter run team, I would put our outside perimeter run a blocking last year the best in the country, the best I've ever witnessed. And we were not very good. We had a speed option down there on the one yard line. Jalen missed his block, was minus four yards. We had a couple of those push sweeps and some perimeter runs where we missed a block, and instead of out the gate, it was eight yard gain. And the one we're cooking, those are the ones that come out. And then, then we had protection problems and, and missed assignments up front. And, and that, that's the reason. And final question. Middle, Kevin? Urban, were you at all disappointed uh, with the performance of JT? He led you guys to a touchdown initially, but was inaccurate through late across the field one time and almost had it intercepted. But you put him in the game for a spark. Were you at all disappointed that he didn't, you know, really live up? And I don't think disappointed is the right word. You know, I, I think our, we have two excellent quarterbacks, and I expect them to play very well. And neither of them played very well Saturday. Disappointments, I don't like that word. I just we got we to better prepare them.